Aloha, and welcome to another episode of Weekly Edit. Things have been getting a little busy around here, and I wasn't able to get to an episode last week. But I got a good one this week. I'm looking at color profiling my camera. A couple episodes ago, I looked at making base curves, which basically tries to match your raw image um, to your in-camera JPEG in terms of the L channel, the luminosity. And this week, I'm using an IT8 target which is a color chart and I'm going to be using an application called darktable hyphen chart to map the um, color patches on the raw image out of my camera with the in-camera JPEG. So there's a couple of things that we need to do in order to make this happen. One is you're going to have to pay the money and get a good target. Okay, there's some cheap ones out there and they have terrible reviews and people say they just don't work. Evidently, the inks on this target are supposed to be such that they maintain their reference proportionality to each other under a variety of lighting conditions. But nonetheless, they recommend that you shoot this target in midday sunny conditions. Um, it was a little bit cloudy, and it's hard to get a sunny day around here, so we're doing this episode with the best I have. Now, I've noticed that I get better results if I match the ISO. Um, my color profiling changes a little bit with ISO, so I'm going to take the time personally, and I'm going to shoot at different ISOs and make uh, color mappings for each ISO just like I did with base curves. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to have a RAW and the JPEG of our color target, so you'll have to change in your camera to um, do that. And I want to have the white swatch down here be around an L92. Okay, so I shot at a variety of exposures, and then I'm going to use the color picker tool on mean and I'm going to look at the luminosity. Okay, this one's around 90, and I shot this one at a 20th of a second. This one here, I shot at a 15th of a second. Let's see what the L value is on that one. That's 98. That's a little hot. I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use the previous one. Okay, now notice my history is blank. Super important. So, we're going to use this one and the matching JPEG. And this is ISO 100, so we're going to generate a color profile for, um, not a color profile, I'm sorry, uh, a color lookup table um, mapping that will match these two. So, I'm going to label this when I'm done with the name of the camera body so that uh, that profile is determinant and the ISO. And then when I'm done with this big project, I'm going to have made a value for each camera body and each ISO that I shoot at. Or um, maybe break it up a little bit, but um, I want to have various values. I don't want to just have two. Okay. I'm going to crop this, and I don't have to. But I find it easier to work in dark table chart if this is cropped a bit first. I don't need to worry about keystoning here. I can fix it later. I want to apply a similar crop to my JPEG. So I'm going to copy and paste this over all of these. There we go. Okay. Now there's two places I can set the output color profile. And I'm going to want to do that because I was getting indeterminate results when I only set it at the export function. So I'm setting this in output color profile to LAB and I'm setting it in the export settings to LAB. Okay. So file format is PFM. And the reason we're converting this and the JPEG to PFMs is that's the format that the Darktable chart program wants to see the files in. And um, profile is LAB. 
Enchanter's image setting. And I'm going to export that one. And then I'll take this JPEG and set it up as LAB and set its export to LAB also. Okay. Something I forgot to go over. There's an RC file associated with uh, Darktable that requires an entry in order for that PFM output using the LAB color space to work properly. And that's located in .config Darktable Darktable RC. And it's this line right here. Allow LAB output equals true. Okay? And if you put this line in this file while Darktable is open, then Darktable will overwrite this RC file when Darktable closes. And that's how it stores whatever session options you set. So you need to make sure you close Darktable first, open this RC file, add that line, close it, and then you can open Darktable again. This part here where I exported these as a PFM only worked because I had added that line previously. This is the one I ended up buying. I got this one in the little plastic case because I could include it in my camera bag and I found that if I took a shot of this and used it um, with my white balance tool I got pretty good results uh, for adjusting my white balance so it seemed like it was convenient to take with me. There's also an 18% uh, gray card on the next page over and it's all plastic so so that seemed like the best one. Okay I'm gonna need the CHT file and what the CHT file is is it's information about what colors are located where on that color checker passport and I'll include a link to this file in my um, web page at uh, weeklyedit.com but also you can just look around the internet and get it okay so now we're gonna open dark table chart This has three tabs, source image, reference values, and process means make it make the mappings. So on the first tab, there's two places. There's image and chart, and it's a little different on the reference values, you'll see. Okay, so we made those PFM files. This is the first one. This was my raw image, okay? And then I'm going to apply that um, chart file. And see, it's just got these squares and it's got reference colors. So we grab the corner and we align it so that the little squares inside the bigger squares only touch the colors that they're supposed to. They don't touch any of the edges, okay? That is pretty important. If you need to, to get it to work, you can adjust the size of the squares. And this is a little backwards. The lower you make the size, the bigger the squares. And the, the larger the size, the smaller the squares. And I think you pretty much want to make it the squares be as big as possible, but not have them touch any of the edges. And that looks pretty good. I'm good and safe there. Okay, then on this next tab, reference values. Here is where we use the um, uh, align the JPEG. So where it says mode, we have to change this and we go to color chart image. And then this time we select the file on the right hand side instead of the left. So under reference image, we'll pick the PFM of the JPEG. All right. And then we have to align this one too. All right, there we go. 
and I'm double checking all my squares. I'm looking at them, make sure none of them see like this one's on the edge and that one's on the edge, but they look okay. Then I go to process, patches with gray ramp. There we go. I like this one, SAT1, SAT8. Number of final patches. I did not get good results at 24. I thought 48 was much better. And then uh, process, and it goes. All right, and now export, and we'll save these, and they save them as styles. Okay, so now we can go in the dark table, and under styles, in the light table view, import, and there we are. And there's our style. Now we'll apply that style to um, an image. Let's see, this one was shot at 100 ISO. Okay, so we click on the image and we double click on the style. Alternatively, you can open the image and go down here and select the style and it'll apply it. And see what it applied here? It applied a, a color lookup table entry and a tone curve entry. Okay, and let's look at the uh, JPEGs right next to it. And Here's the JPEG, okay, and here's the RAW with the changes made, and it looks pretty good. It looks kind of close. It's not perfect. The L channel looks like it could use a little work, but the colors are close, and it's a lot better than the original RAW, right? There's the original RAW and the JPEG, and here's what the changes. Excellent. So here's what we can do. We can come over here to color lookup table and we can say store new preset. And I'm going to call it my camera body name and the ISO. And then it will auto-apply this. Each time. Oops. One change there. Only raw images. There we go. There's also an entry here under tone curve and I would do the same thing. I would set a preset and tell it to auto apply. All right. And you can see this one didn't use the base curve because um, the base curve is specifically set off and it makes the changes in the tone curve instead. Okay. That was at 100 ISO. Let's find one at 3200 ISO because I said I wanted to do these for various ISOs. Okay, so this should go a lot quicker. Now we're looking for the white here to be around 92. So I take my color picker and I check it. That one's at 73. That's not even close. Okay, this one was shot at a thousandth of a second. And this one at an eight hundredth. This one at a six hundred and fortieth. Let's see what that is. Oh, well, that's better. It's at 87. And this next one here was shot at a 500th of a second. Let's see that one. These are generally going to run around plus 1 to plus 2 on your exposure. That one's at 95. I think that's fine. Let's use that one. Okay. So, don't forget, we got to go in here and change our output color profile to LAB. And same thing with the adjacent JPEG. And we're going to take these two and we're going to make a PFM. PFM, LAB, image settings. Go. Okay. Now we're going to change this PFM image to this new one we just did. Now, I know this is silly, but you got to reselect this. If you don't, at least on my version, 
it won't give you this option at the end to process. So I reselect it and then realign it. And make those squares a little bit bigger by pulling this slider down. Make sure I'm not over the edge anywhere. This is a little close, so I'm going to pull this end up a little bit. Check all your squares. Make sure they're all good. All right, we're good. Okay, now we go on to the second one, which is the one we made from the uh, JPEG. And then I'll line this again. And make these squares a little bit bigger too. Are they all good? Everything's good? Oh, that one's close. Let's pull that up a little bit. Okay. And we are rock and roll. Okay. Then we go to process. SAT again, 48, hit process, and then export. Okay. Now, we'll come in here in Darktable, go to Styles, Import, and our new style should be there. And this is the one for uh, 3200 ISO. So we'll apply this to this image here, which was shot at 3200 ISO. And then when we look at it and the JPEG, they look pretty darn close too, don't they? Here was our original. And that's the JPEG. And here's what the change is made. And there's the JPEG. That's pretty close too. But I have found that I can get even closer. And the way I can get even closer is by applying the custom base curves that I built in a previous episode prior to exporting this raw as a PFM. So let's give that a shot. Now I want to warn you, it specifically says that you're not supposed to do this in the dark table manual. Yeah, but I get better results and I'm interested in results, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we'll change this back to RGB and we're going to apply the base curve to this that's appropriate for 3200. Mm, I think 5000 is probably the right one. Okay, now this is important. You got to recheck your L level after the base curve. And look, we're up at 99. No bueno. Okay. So we got to go back to one that had a faster shutter speed because we're applying the base curve now. So the previous one was shot at a 640th of a second. Let's apply that base curve again and check it. 97. We're still way up there. Okay. So let's go way back to this one. Let's see, here we are, a thousandth of a second. Apply our base curve and check it. 92, hey, that's pretty darn close. So we're gonna take this one, we're gonna change the color output to LAB, we're gonna go to the next image, which is the corresponding JPEG, we're gonna change it to LAB. We're going to take these two, export them as PFMs. There we go. Bingo. Go into this program, and we'll knock this thing out. Source image. Let's see. go oh 
I forgot I got to re-import this otherwise I will just be wasting my time okay Now don't forget, what's different with this one is we started by applying the base curve image to it. Checking all of my squares. Okay. Now the corresponding JPEG to this one. Check in all my squares, make sure that they're exclusively on the color I want. Okay, that all looks good. Now process. There we go. And process and export. Now we're going to take the um, shot that was shot at 3200 ISO and we're going to apply that style to it. So we'll need to import it. And then we need to apply it by double clicking on it. All right. Now this time, remember, we added the base curve before we exported it as a PMF. So we need to re-add that base curve to complete the calculations here. And there we go. That's the JPEG. And that's the raw with the base curve applied first. And they are very, very close. All right. Wow. That was a lot. <laughs> um, everybody have a great week. And uh, you can refer to the show notes, and I'll try and include relevant information there. Um, see you all later. Bye.